Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lisa. I'm an Australian expat living in Amsterdam. The last few weeks in the Netherlands have actually been really cold. And so I decided to make a video all about how to survive winter in the Netherlands. Winter temperatures in the Netherlands are actually considered to be quite mild compared to other countries around the world. The average temperature in December in the Netherlands is about four degrees Celsius. In January, it's two degrees and February it's three degrees although as I speak now it is currently minus two degrees Celsius outside. Coming from a warm country like Australia I'd say that adjusting to the temperatures here during winter and even during autumn were quite difficult and challenging for me. If you're coming from a warmer country like me chances are you're going to be just as shocked and perhaps just as clueless as I was and in this video I'm going to cover three topics. First one is clothing tips Tips. The second topic is things that you can do in the house and also thirdly your day-to-day -day mindset and the different day-to-day -day routines that you can adopt during this challenging season. So without further ado let's get started. Okay you're going to want to start off with a close to skin base layer and usually for me this means putting on a thermal top and thermal leggings. I buy all my thermals from Uniqlo's Heat Tech range and I love Uniqlo's Heat Tech range because they have different levels of warmth as well. So it means that you can have different heat tech tops and thermal leggings for different moments of the season. I always try to buy the ones with the fleece lining which is what makes these thermals so warm. Second thing that you're going to add is a warm jumper layer like what I'm wearing right now. Some people think that certain materials like wool, cashmere, fleece are warmer than other materials but I recently learned that this is a misconception. What actually matters is the thickness of the material so i.e. the thicker the material the warmer it's going to be. As for pants, I have to say I'm pretty boring. I usually do just wear jeans because if I'm wearing thermal leggings underneath then I'm already quite warm but if it is an especially cold day then I will wear my corduroy pants because it's a thicker material. I got these ones from Everlane and I get that these aren't everyone's style but I personally like them because they are a looser fit and it's much more comfortable to wear thermal leggings underneath these pants. As I said earlier the winter here is considered to be mild compared to other countries so I do think that wearing thermal leggings is kind of enough of a buffer. Having a good winter coat or jacket, I think this is the most important part and this is the part that I struggled with the most when I arrived here because I just did not know where I could buy the best possible coat. I own three different winter coats that I wear at different points during the season. The first one is the Ayakusho Blue 3-in-1 Jacket. Um, I bought this from beaver.nl which is a very reputable website where you can get a lot of outdoor apparel and winter clothes such as this coat. This coat is great, it is waterproof, it's windproof, it has a removable down jacket. Uh, this is the jacket that I wear when we are transitioning into colder weather and it is what I like to also wear during autumn when it's not so cold yet but it's starting to get a little bit chilly. What I like about this jacket is, as I said earlier, it's a three-in-one jacket. So you can remove the down jacket inside. The downside of this jacket is that it only comes to your waist. So if it is bucketing down with rain, then it's not very helpful because your legs are still going to get quite wet. Um, and that brings me to the next winter coat that I love to wear, the Uniqlo waterproof down jacket. It comes down to around my knees and it's lined with down. So it is not only very, very warm, it's also incredibly light to carry. This is probably the jacket that I wear the most because it is so light and it feels really comfortable to wear. And I also personally feel that it looks quite put together for a down jacket and not too sloppy. Oftentimes you see these down jackets that look so, so comfortable, but they also kind of look like a doona. 
and um, if you want to wear it to like a professional function it doesn't look as put together and as sleek I did wear it a lot under a lot of rain at the Cologne Christmas markets last year and it actually held up really really well we were outdoors all day and I stayed dry the whole time so I actually think it held up okay but I wouldn't recommend wearing this jacket under extreme heavy rain and then the third jacket that I own is the Elvine waterproof jacket this is made of recycled padding from thermal uh, so it is a lot heavier than my down jacket but it does feel a lot warmer Elvin is a Swedish brand I love the company's environmentally friendly ethos but I actually bought this secondhand from Vinted for about 30 or 40 euros so it was a pretty sweet deal in case you haven't heard of it Vinted is an online secondhand marketplace. Vinted has pretty much any brand you can think of. It has the vintage stuff that you would normally find in a traditional secondhand vintage store on the street. But there's also lots of normal chain store brands like Zara, Mango, H&M, um, Arquette, Cos, blah, blah, blah. So it has everything and that's why I love it. Anyway. If you want to buy Elvin brand new, then you can buy it from a few different shops in the Netherlands. The Bayenkoff, which is a department store here in Amsterdam. We are labels, or there's a lovely store in the West called Johnny on the Spot. It's an independent boutique store and they stock a lot of different coats, including Elvin, but also other brands as well. The key thing that all these coats have in common is that they are waterproof. And this is so important because in the Netherlands, it rains a lot especially during winter um, and also even during autumn. And the thing about the weather here too is that it's unpredictable. So one minute it's raining, next minute it's sunny, then it's raining again, then it's sunny again. So if you're going to be out for most of the day, then the last thing you want is to be caught out in the rain unexpectedly and be drenched. And this is also something I don't like about those down puffer jackets that you see a lot in a lot of the stores because yes, they're very, very warm. Yes, they're very comfortable, but they're not waterproof. And when it rains, you're going to get soaked through, you're going to get wet. And it's also not very good for your jacket as well to get wet all the time. So I already mentioned some shops, but other brands you could look at are Decathlon and Fjord Raven. Decathlon is more on the budget end. Fjord Raven is more on the expensive end different quality, different styles. Or like I said, you can go to shops like Beaver. They stock a lot of different brands like North Face, Patagonia, Jack Wolf Skin, Ayacucho, like my uh, jackets brand. Shoes is also something that I found really, really difficult here. I've talked about it very briefly in a previous video that I did, um, but the shoes that I wear every day during winter are my Doc Martens Furline Allison Chelsea boots. They are waterproof, they have a great sole, so they have very good grip. The best thing about it is that they are fleece lined so they're very warm and comfortable to wear. I love Doc Martens because they are durable. They last for a really long time. I've had Doc Martens in the past and they literally lasted forever so I actually bought these as an investment piece because I plan to wear these for many years to come. Doc Martens have different styles I think that suit everyone. I also really like these ones. Um, I think they're really nice. They're also fleece lined and they're very 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 popular. Another brand you could look into is Timberland. They also have some lined boots that are suitable for winter and Timberland boots are very good quality. They also tend to be waterproof if not water resistant um, and I personally think that style wise they're pretty good. You can easily pair them up with lots of different outfits. The shoes that I like to wear inside are my Ugg boots. I do see people wear them outdoors. Just keep in mind they're not waterproof. I tend to see them more as an indoor shoe. I'll talk about gloves. So I got these from Uniqlo. I swear to God, I'm not sponsored by Uniqlo. I just think that they're an incredibly useful and functional brand. Um, I got these quite recently because I have a bad habit of losing all my gloves. Um, but these are actually really, really good. They're heat tech, so they're really, really warm. I don't know if you can see, but they're fleece lined here. And what I like about these is that they are touch screen gloves. So you can touch the screen with your index finger or your thumb and they do work really, really well. And just a tip out there for small people or petite people like me, the adult heat tech uh, screen gloves, they were in medium and large size but they were too big for my tiny hand. So I actually went to the children's section and I got the large 
children's glove and they fit me like a glove. I'm basically a big child. Um, the other thing that obviously is essential is a thick beanie. This one I got from Herschel. I've worn it a lot. I wore it all through Iceland actually and it kept me really, really warm. What I like about it is that it is really, really, really thick. It's 100% acrylic. Like I said, it's not about the material, it's about the thickness. The other thing that I highly recommend is to get a balaclava. This is something I would have never worn in Australia. In my mind, a balaclava is something you wear to rob a bank or to rob a shop. Here this is something that people wear to keep themselves warm and it makes sense because when you go skiing you wear a ski balaclava. It keeps everything in place, right? My hair is all under control. It's not going to be flying in my face when I'm outside or if I'm biking. It covers my ears, it covers part of my face, it feels really warm. It's like a warm hug, it's so comfortable. And on top of that, it also covers my neck. So if I wear something like this, I usually don't wear a scarf because my neck is already covered. Personally, I don't enjoy wearing a scarf when I'm also wearing a big coat. This is a nice thick winter scarf but it is very uncomfortable to wear when you're already wearing a lot of layers and when you fold it, it's very thick. So it's very annoying to carry as well. It takes up a lot of space. And the other thing that I really like about the balaclava is that if I tie up my hair and put it on, then it's also very comfortable and it won't mess up my hairstyle. If I had my hair up like this, then I can simply put it around me. There's enough fabric at the back for my hairstyle to sit comfortably without it straining against my head. I guess this is what I would look like if I was Asian M&M. It's very, very uncomfortable to have this at the back. And also when I take it off, oh, it actually came out. Um, so it's very hard to um, hold your hairstyle. The final accessory that I absolutely love is this. I got this from Weekday. I also got the balaclava from Weekday. It's basically a fake turtleneck top. I usually just slip this on and then I put a jacket over it and you can't even really tell if it's like all zipped up. It just looks like I'm wearing a normal turtleneck. So if I'm wearing this and my balaclava, I am covered. I don't need a scarf at all. It's almost like a little cheat layer that you can take with you in case things get really cold. You don't want to take a whole nother jumper but you just want like a little bit of extra warmth. And I actually think it's very cute and cozy. How you can make your home as comfortable as possible during the winter season. Um, so from a practical perspective, you wanna keep your home as warm as possible. Yes, one very obvious way is to turn off the heater, but the other thing that I think people don't talk enough about is energy efficiency in the home. Gas is really expensive in Europe right now, so you wanna just try and trap that heat in your home as much as possible. Check whether there's any draft or wind coming through the window frame because you want to seal that ASAP. A very quick and easy way to do that and a cheap way to do that is to buy some weather strips from your local hardware store like Hummer or Praxis. You apply it to where there are gaps in the window. It prevents like wind coming in and it also prevents heat from escaping as well. The second thing which we also did is to buy radiator foil for the radiators in your home. This is essentially a thin sheet of foil that you can apply to the wall behind your radiator. The idea is that the foil reflects the heat away from the wall and thereby will reduce heat losses in your home. In the Netherlands, this product is called Radiator Foley. Another thing that people often have in their home is a sun lamp. So in mid-December, for instance, the sun doesn't rise until 8.40 a.m. and chances are that you will wake up before 8.40 a.m. So you're gonna wake up in the dark. This is mentally and emotionally very difficult thing to get used to. It often means that you're jolted awake in the dark by your alarm and it feels like the middle of the night but it's not so it's very hard to wake up feeling refreshed and like you've woken up naturally the idea of the sun lamp is that it will mimic the feeling of sunlight in your room if you are interested in getting sun lamps you can get them via a website here called cool blue this is a very reliable website where you can buy all sorts of electronic goods um, we've used it a ton of times they're very very good they ship very quickly the final one which a lot of people talk about is making your home look as cozy 
or as the Dutch say, as gezellig as possible. Easy ways that you can do this are to use warm lighting, lots of candles, blankets, Christmas decorations in December are a very uh, easy way to make your home look cozy. You can also create new rituals to look forward to. So for instance, hot chocolate movie nights or movie marathons, cozy meals with friends, board game nights at home, etc. The whole idea behind this is that you're gonna be spending a lot of time indoors. So you need to make your home feel as warm as possible. Final thing I wanna talk about is mindset and your day-to-day -day routines during winter. And now that this is my third winter in the Netherlands, I think I've got it down pat. The first thing that I actually found really helpful was to stay active. Even though that's the last thing I want to do during winter. So for me, that means taking a walk, even if it's not super sunny and beautiful weather, I'll still try to go outside as much as possible or even joining a workout class. Um, and I'm part of class pass, so I can join a whole range of different classes via this service. So exercise means different things for everyone. I recognize that not everyone enjoys working out. I do think getting fresh air, going outside, getting a little bit of light, no matter how much light you can get, is really important to your overall mental and emotional well-being. And the second thing which really touches more so on mindset is meditation. When I first arrived during winter in the Netherlands, there was also a lockdown. So unsurprisingly, I found myself feeling quite down during the winter season um, and what I really relied on a lot were my free meditation sessions that I did via Insight Timer. This is an app that you can download on your phone. Now even though I don't meditate every single day, if I'm feeling really low or if I'm feeling really stressed at work or if I just feel like I need a comforting way to start my morning then I will open up Insight Timer and do a little morning meditation session. The other thing that's really important are vitamin D pills. Um, vitamin D is really really important for us to stay healthy and to fight infections, to fight inflammation. This is something that we can naturally get from the sun during sunnier months but during the winter months there isn't enough sunlight outdoors and therefore we're not able to create naturally enough vitamin D. Some of the symptoms of vitamin D deficiency are symptoms of depression. So that's also why it's so important to take vitamin D, not only because it'll keep your body healthy, but it's also going to help you feel happier. According to the NHS website, children from the age of one year and adults need 10 micrograms of vitamin D a day. Because we can't get enough vitamin D naturally from the sun, that's where the vitamin D supplements come in. I take one every day with my food. You can buy these for very little money from Kravat, Atos, Holland and Barrett. Those are kind of the three health and wellness chemists here. And the final thing about mindset that I find really helpful, which maybe sounds a bit sad, but I do think is very effective, is I'm already thinking about summer. I will already start planning what I'm going to do during the summertime to have something to look forward to. Or perhaps I'll even, if I can afford it, I will even book a trip to a sunnier location during winter. So for instance, since last year we decided to go to the south of Spain during um, late October and November when it was already starting to get quite cold and grey and this year we decided to go to Morocco for one and a half weeks which was really great because we were able to steal just that little bit of sunshine and a little bit more warmth right before it started to get really cold in the Netherlands. But oftentimes I find that just being able to plan and look forward to the warmer months ahead are enough to get me through these very challenging months. So literally right after filming this video, I went out and decided to have my lunch in the sun because the weather today is uncharacteristically beautiful. The sun is out, it's still very cold, but the sky is blue at least, and it's not absolutely freezing cold. I'm gonna have my lunch and enjoy the sun and get as much vitamin D as possible. I just finished lunch and I took a little walk around the park, but I'm going to head home now. Um, I'm happy to say though that everything I'm wearing kept me really, really warm. And probably the only part of me that's quite cold is my nose because it's obviously exposed and not covered. 
there's nothing much I can do about that I suppose but yeah I hope you found this video helpful if there was anything that you felt I missed out on then please leave it in the comments down below if you like this video then please give it a thumbs up and make sure you hit the subscribe button down below too so that way you don't miss out on any new videos from me otherwise I will see you in the next one bye Thank you.